Well, they, but um, this is the impression I get. Um, I, I want to talk uh, just uh, f uh, about uh, the lady because, uh, as you said, uh, you had uh, the connection with the lady of M Monségur and you make the movie, The Other Worlds, where you explain all this. And uh, what is your own uh, relationship with uh, the lady that uh, you think uh, she's a goddess? We don't know uh, you what say the you lady were is. a kind of knight of the goddess. Of we Monsignor, don't know what she is. Lady. And uh, uh, your mission, you had mission, so to protect the place. Um, I would be an asshole if I didn't. I mean, you can't have such an experience and walk away and say, okay, I don't care. Of course, I care what happens to this place, and I would like, to, I would not want to see this place destroyed like Luzanak. Yes, know. yes, I understand this, but uh, uh, if you want to talk uh, about uh, what you feel with uh, the lady or uh, of the, okay. I wonder um, if she uh, in this uh, situation, uh, it's. Uh, Nine, ten years you are here. Do you think uh, she had the power to do something for you, or maybe in another way, it's a time for you to move from here for making uh, something else, another work, uh, or something? <laughs> I don't know. Want to leave uh, here because of my cat. I do not want to abandon my cat. Your cat, yes? Yeah. Um, and do you, do you think the... My cat has never left Montsegur. She is a, a Montsegur cat. Th she that the goddess? Your goddess? Your... <coughs> your... Your lady? <laughs> do you think she wants you to leave the place? Uh, um, it's possible, if it is a goddess. And uh, ending your work here at Montségur for making another work in the same uh, spirit with uh, and uh, how, how can I say this? Maybe to for you to uh, uh, well <laughs> a change in a big change in your life. For me, there for, is no rest. Uh, in, a, in a way, promo promote uh, what you learned here, your own uh, experience and your relationship with a lady, with a goddess, to bring this uh, to, to the people. I don't know, because I don't know what the force in the mountain is. Um, it was initially, I think, um, Scarlet who was thinking it was the the goddess when we first saw her. When I first saw her, I thought that it was the, um, that it was Esclamant, that it was um, the, um, either, es it was, I thought it was Esclamant Dalian, in fact, I thought it was not Esclamant de Foire, but the, not the, um, the sister of the Comte de Foire, but the daughter of the Comte de Foire. I thought it was the next generation. I think the one we saw was the Esclamont Dalian of, um, of Montaigu, um, and not Esclamont de Foire. Um, but I thought she was a historic personage who had, um, transcended time, who, that maybe the, the Cathar Consolamentum or the, the secret rites of the Cathars had really enabled some people to step outside of um, time, outside of the earthly incarnation. It's meant to break the cycle of incarnation and break the cycle of time. Uh, and if that was true, then maybe it was possible for um, someone who has stepped out of the world of Rex Mundi to still exist, to still be alive, and to always be alive, to not be part of the, of the cycle of time, to be free from death. So um, some part of me thought it was a goddess, but also some part of me thought maybe it was um, 
a, a genuine historic personage who is also an aspect of the goddess, a guardian of the land. Maybe um, the three Esclamons, Esclamon de Perey, Esclamon de Foix, and Esclamon d'Alion are avatars or an expression of the Dame Blanche, an expression of the deus, of the force that's always guarded the mountain and always guarded Occitania. I'm not sure whether she is a, a goddess or a an avatar or some people have suggested an egregore, um, something which is created by our own beliefs. We have a, a one theory is the what I call the Solaris theory, um, which is the theory that the force presents itself in the form which is the most accessible to the person it appears to. That I am Richard, so therefore she appeared as a a beautiful, frightening, um, powerful priestess, because this was the form where I would be most susceptible to to dealing with it. Another person might have seen a child or an old woman. Um, possibly it chooses the form according to the beliefs of the person who, who witnesses it. Uh, or, uh, that the, the, un, the inexpressible, the ultimate, expresses itself in a way that we can comprehend. And because I read a lot of Warren comic books and Vampirella magazines, maybe this was the form that it took for, in, in my case, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what that thing is, all I know is it exists, uh, and that I cannot explain it. Um, I believe that this apparition has appeared before, and that this has happened before. I think it happened in the 1890s, at the time of Napoleon Perrat and the time of Jules Duanel and the, the Gnostic Catholic Church when Jules Duanel declared it the, the era of Gnosis restored, and when they channeled the Gnostic mass here at Montsegur, of Tau Esclamond and um, Tau Montsegur, when they, they at first tried to revive the faith, and Peyrat wrote um, um, Une Histoire d'Albigeois, I think around 1875 there was a, um, a, a, a revival or an attempt to, um, to wake up again, and then it fell into obscurity until the 1920s, and it seems to me there was another revival in the 20s and 30s, the time of Otto Rahn, of um, René Nelly, of um, Maurice Marg, of Diodat Rocher, of um, Anthony Goodell. Um, there was a, another revival, a point where the energy was very strong and a lot of um, secret societies like the Polaires were drawn here to the mountains. It was the, the time of Otto Rahn. And um, again in this time I think that um, this force, Esclamond, or um, the power of the Cathar adepts reaching across time, tried once again to um, to restore the the web of time where it was broken in the 13th century. And many people believe that, um, like Grace Cook from the White Eagles, that um, spiritual forces, invisible brothers, were reaching out to them in the 20s and 30s. And Marg writes very explicitly about um, Esclamond, and how she is still there in the north-facing tower of the castle, that she will always be there, that her hand can be seen above the clouds making the sign to show that she is there. And um, what happened uh, it was after the 20s and 30s there was not a, a Gnostic revival and there was not a period of peace, but of course we had World War II and um, most of those people were killed or um, most of the secret societies were criminalized or um, under the Vichy regime. Otto Rahn died in the snow in 1939. Nine years later they did not create a new world order, they were destroyed. And the, um, the occult revival collapsed again and did not revive until now. In the last few years, since the 80s, since the appearance of um, Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, then Da Vinci Code, more and more strange people have been coming to the to, to the zone, to the area, and again we have seen a revival. And um, of course, then the mountain becomes active again, and um, we start to see apparitions and presences on the mountain. I do not know what that means. I don't know whether that means there will be a spiritual awakening or whether it means we will be destroyed. Uh, last time round it was World War II. Um, this time round maybe it will be World War III. I, I don't know what will come next. Uh, I don't know what my fate is. <coughs> the people who saw the lady in the past did not profit from it. Otto Rahn was dead in the snow very quickly. And um, 
So what will happen now? Uh, there will be all kinds of possibilities. If she was a goddess, maybe she will protect me. She should be strong enough to um, save me, to take me through this. But at the same time, I'm getting old. I'm not as young as I was 27 years ago. Not as young as I was 10 years ago. And maybe the goddess is tired of me. Maybe she looks at me and she thinks I'm not so good looking anymore. Maybe I'm smoking too much and it is time she finds a new guardian. Um, but, um, certainly in um, <clears throat> Greek mythology and in Sumerian mythology, when the goddess tires of you, she, she turns you into a frog or <laughs> casts you aside. It is not always a good end for um, people who have been her favourites. Because we are mortal, we cannot stay young and forever. Um, maybe my time is over. Maybe um, I'm not as useful to her as I was. I would like to believe that she still loves me. But um, she is a goddess. Is not for if she is a goddess or something supernatural. Is not for a human being to understand. She is beyond my comprehension. Yes, but you know what I think about uh, about this. For me, uh, I think there is a part of uh, an entity uh, created by human. <coughs> Uh, as you said before, with uh, a lot of uh, occult uh, work, the yeah. last century, That's you've that never can seen that. create some uh, paranormal phenomenon. Uh, that's what I think. I told you, yeah. and that's what why uh, we had some fight like last year about this. <laughs> uh, so, in one way, uh, if you are, if you, because it's not uh, made yet, if you have to go, uh, do you think it's uh, a failure for you in your Yeah, for sure, it's a disaster for me. In your spiritual life or and, uh, yeah. something like this? I will never be happy anywhere else. 